So I'm about six months late in reviewing this, but this is the new AC50S. In the previous model, I complained to my viewers not to buy because the output was not regulated, but this one should have a regulated output. So a pretty simple unit, you turn it on right here, you have a DC on and off button and an AC inverter on and off button, and it's a pure sine wave inverter, and the 12 volt output is now regulated, so we have 13.6 volts. And the reason I complained about having a regulated output previously is because with this battery chemistry, the nominal voltage is pretty low. Too low, in fact, to have good performance with 12 volt appliances. But the DC power plug is 11.4 volts. That's not acceptable. So the 10 amp output is regulated, but these power plugs are not. That's unfortunate. I was not expecting that. So unfortunately, I would not use these power plugs. I would stick to using the cigarette lighter adapter. Where is the input on this thing? Oh, it's right here. And then you also have a button for the light. That's interesting. And the input says 12 to 40 volts, 120 watts max. But we're only charging the 83 watts, so it would take around six hours to fully charge this battery pack. And that's pretty slow. I wish they could double that figure. So let's fully charge it and do a capacity test. Something to note though is because these are unregulated, it's more efficient because you don't have to go through a converter circuit. This one has a boost converter or step up regulator, and this will consume a little bit more power. That efficiency loss is around three to seven percent, sometimes higher. It depends on the voltage differential across the converter um, input to output but because we're only stepping up a couple of volts I think it's not going to be that bad and unfortunately it doesn't have power plug adapters that's a bummer you would think they would have that <laughs> in this package. Before this is fully charged, we're gonna connect this to a solar panel. This is Rich Solar's new 100 watt panel, and it's specifically made for small solar generators. And it has a positive and negative, but connected to an Anderson connector. And the AC50S actually comes with an MC4 adapter, but because this solar panel does not have MC4 adapters, we're gonna have to cut these off and manually connect them to this panel. And knowing the polarity of these two wires is easy because one is red and one is black. So the red goes to the red and the black goes to the black. And now that it's connected, we need to check the polarity at the plug just to make sure that we did everything right. We have 14 volts and there's no negative signs, so we have proper polarity. Now we can bring the solar panel outside in the sun and connect it to our unit. And unfortunately, it's really cloudy, so I'm only pulling 24 watts, and it's winter time. So yeah, let's go back inside and put this on the AC charger. But we're going to test out this panel more in the future. I really like it for these small units. And now the unit is fully charged. Zero watts are going in, and it shows 100%. Now that it's fully charged, we're going to do a capacity test. And we could do a 0.2C test and try to pull full capacity. But with the inverter losses, regulator losses, and I don't want to do a 15 hour test with these non-regulated DC plugs, we're just going to do a max output test. And typically these units fail the max load test more than any other test out there. So this should be pretty fun. And right now we're pulling 301 watts. So we're going to see how long it can power this load for. Test is done, but I was not here. So let's turn it on. And we only got 250 watt hours. That's not very good. <laughs> Even at that discharge rate with this chemistry, it should be pulling a higher number. This is why I like doing teardowns first. I'd rather get straight to the cells and see what they're using. All right, let's do some more testing. Let's try to milk some more power from this thing. So maybe it cut off from over temperature. So let's see if maybe we have more capacity. Oh, uh oh. We still have 250 watt hours, so that didn't do anything. All right, well, it shows 0% state of charge, so let's charge it back up again. We could do a 10 amp discharge test from this receptacle and it would take only 3.8 hours, but we need to wait six to seven hours for this thing to recharge. This is not fun. I was expecting at worst 400 watt hours, because that would mean that we had an 80% efficiency inverter, but 50%, ah, oh, that's, that's pretty bad. I've got an interesting problem right now. It's not charging. And if it was over temperature and preventing charging, it would have an error code for that. So that's strange. We have power connected and it's not charging. I'm gonna go run outside and try to charge it with the solar panel and see if the higher voltage helps. 
Yeah, it did not make a difference. But the inverter circuit is, oh, there we go. It just started charging. So it took about 30 minutes to start charging again, but yeah, we're at 83 watts, so that's good. So I do not feel motivated to test this any further. I just looked up the new Jackery that has the same size battery as this, and it has a 500 watt inverter. But the Jackery has the same recharge speed. I can't believe after this many years, no one has made a small generator that can connect to a 200 watt panel. It's just crazy. And our first capacity test results were very discouraging. I would rather spend the next 10 hours doing something else than testing this. So if I were you, I would just stick with the Jackery. The Jackery does cost more, but you get a lot more. You get almost double the inverter capacity. And the power plugs are regulated. So yeah, I would, I would not buy this. But I do like Blue Eddy's other units, specifically this thing. This is my favorite Blue Eddy product. In my solar shed, I ran an air conditioner for months, 24 seven, and this thing worked flawlessly. And I've overloaded the solar input multiple times with voltage and current, and it handles it like a champ. So Blue Eddy's older stuff, I really like it. It works really well. And if they released this a few years ago, I think it would be very popular. But considering the units that you can buy from Jackery, I don't think anyone's gonna buy this, in my opinion. It looks nice, I guess. I mean, the blue and the black looks cool. But it does have a wireless charging pad on the top, and I don't think the Jackery does have that. And that's about it. That's the only special feature that I can see on here. This had a 500 watt inverter, lithium iron phosphate batteries, and could connect to 200 watts of solar panel power. I would talk about it all the time. I'd be like, this is the best thing in the world. But this is just severely underpowered in my opinion. And if you guys disagree with any of the conclusions that I have drawn, please let me know. I do not feel motivated to test this any further considering its stats and price, but yeah, let me know below. Anyways, I hope you guys like this video and I will talk to you soon. Bye.